first article from uh, the Daily News in Philadelphia. Mayor expected to sign order curtailing police slash ICE collaboration. Mayor Nutter, the nutty, nutter, nutty idiot from uh, Philadelphia, is expected to sign an executive order. See, they're really into this. They're really into this dictatorship thing. The left, at every level of government. That will significantly limit collaboration between Philadelphia police and federal immigration authorities. Well, he won't get any objection from Obama. The order is expected to preclude police from honoring detainer requests by U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement, except in cases where a person is convicted of a first or second degree felony involving violence, and only when ICE secures a warrant to support the detainer. This is why the American people are furious with what took place in Nevada against an American citizen rancher three, four, five generations treated like a criminal. Well, we have the rule of law. Oh, we have a federal court order. Well, what about the rule of law when it comes to illegal aliens? They just dismiss it. They sweep it away. They're in a power grab, a land grab, except when it comes to the border, which they already own. They're going to put it to the American citizen. They're going to stick it to the American citizen. But so desirous are they of importing aliens into this country who will change the nature of citizenship, who will change the demographics, who will change the party structure, who will vote Democrat, Democrat, and Democrat again. That they don't give a damn. The amazing thing is the number of Republicans who go along with this. You know, that guy in Nevada, yeah, he doesn't have a leg to stand on legally. Uh, but we ought to at least join hands on this immigration thing, you know. We need comprehensive immigration reform. We need comprehensive citizenship reform. We are not subjects. We are the owners of this country. We are to be in charge of this country. Not you creepy crackpot politicians. The mayor of Philadelphia. Whatever happened? I ask our justices on the Supreme Court. Whatever happened to the federal plenary power when it comes to immigration? Here we have a puke mayor from Philadelphia. My hometown. I'm going to sign an executive order. No longer will we work with the immigration, ICE service, and so forth. What the hell are you talking about, pal? Federal supremacy in this area, except, of course, when you're a liberal advancing a left-wing agenda. Then the law means crap. It means nothing. Well, there were federal court orders against this rancher, and there was a federal court order against Obama in New Orleans. Remember that? And he blew it off. There was a federal court order against this president in Florida on Obamacare. Remember that? And he blew that off, too. Sorry, it's frustrating. So there we have a mayor. I'm not going to enforce federal law. We have sanctuary cities. We have sanctuary states in violation of federal immigration statutes. Doesn't matter. Only Arizona and the other states that actually try to enforce federal law by passing state laws that essentially have that purpose. And wait a minute. States can't do that. Only liberal mayors can do that. Only liberal governors can do that. Stunning, isn't it? Then I have this article. From the Associated Depressed. Same issue, immigration. By Erica Werner. Or is it Verne? Latinos and immigration activists are warning of political peril for President Barack Obama and Democrats in the fall election unless the president acts boldly and soon to curb deportations and allow more immigrants to remain legally in the United States. In other words, these ethnic front groups, radical groups, many of which collaborate with foreign governments. That's right, I said it. And I know this for a fact because I've litigated against these countries that go into the Supreme Court. Yes, you better break the law, Barack Obama, more than you have. You better exercise your imperial powers more broadly and quickly. Or we're going to punish you and your party. So I got to thinking, how much more can he do? I guess there's more. Remember how I started out the program? Constant agitation, constant revolution, nothing's ever resolved. Many activists say Obama has been slow to grasp the emotions building within the Latino community as deportations near the two million mark for his administration and hopes for immigration legislation fade.
With House Republicans unlikely to act on the overhaul, executive action by Obama is increasingly the activists' only hope. And they go on, one loser after another quoted here. We need executive action. We need a dictatorship. Now, the Associated Press, Eric Werner, why don't you get your facts straight, lady? Why don't you get your information straight rather than just regurgitating what these front groups tell you? These front groups are trying to work up their membership. They're trying to work up the people they claim to represent. Because this is what the radical left does. And then, to my stunning amazement, article number three, I turn to the New York Slimes, oh, I'd say about an hour ago, and here's this headline. Court deportations drop 43% in the past five years. So in other words, the AP story is based on a complete fraud perpetrated by the ethnic radical front groups that are pushing for Obama to violate the Constitution and expand his imperial power. And then here's the New York Slimes, Julia Preston, who I'm sure will be uh, attacked at some point. Well, what does Julia have to write? Well, let's take a look if my damn computer would work properly. Hold on, I'm getting there. Oh, there we are. Here we go. Court deportations dropped 43% in the past five years. <gasps> you mean Obama, who lied about Obamacare, every damn thing about Obamacare, he lied. The cost of the policies, you can keep your doctor, you can keep your policy. It'll reduce the debt. Lie after lie after lie, because after all... That's what Marxists do. They lie, and they have to. So that headline caught my attention from the almost bankrupt New York Slimes. New deportation cases brought by the Obama administration and the nation's immigration courts have been declining steadily since 2009, and judges have increasingly ruled against deportations, leading to a 43% drop in the number of deportations through the courts in the last five years, according to Injustice Department statistics released today. Oh, my goodness. I'm sure this will change the debate completely in this nation. The figures show that the administration opened 26% fewer deportation cases in the courts last year than in 2009. And in 2013, immigration judges ordered deportations in 105,000 cases nationwide. The statistics present a different picture of Obama's enforcement policies than the one painted by many immigrant advocates who have assailed the president as the deporter-in-chief. This entire effort, ladies and gentlemen, has been a complete political and public relations fraud. These front groups know full well that deportations are way, way, way down. They know better than anybody. They're working with the Injustice Department under Eric Holder. They're working with the Obama administration. But there's this drama, this staged play that goes on for you and me, where, oh, Obama's just the deporter-in-chief. He's so, I mean, law enforcement, what the hell's wrong with this guy? He's deporting left and right and right and left, when the facts demonstrate otherwise. But then the groups, let's get our members such as they are, the people we claim to represent, all worked up into a tizzy. Let's push the political system. And some of the mouthpieces in the outlets in the news media, let's push them too. This New York Times piece will get one day's attention from me. Then it'll be gone. He'll still be the deporter-in-chief and Obama. He'll go to the microphone. Nobody's been more, more aggressive about securing the border and deporting criminal illegal aliens than I. The statistics, everybody who looks at the statistics will, will agree on that. But we have to be compassionate and humane. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know what chain migration is? Go ahead and Google it. Tell me we're not compassionate and humane. We do things in this country on immigration that no country on the face of the earth will do. None. Because they fear that if they act like we do, they'll lose their country. They'll lose their sovereignty. But if you don't give a damn about American sovereignty in the first place, if you want to fundamentally transform America, what do you do? Well, you import people into this country from different backgrounds, different histories, different cultures, particularly if they're unskilled or have no skills and are illiterate because they're pliable. They're easy to manipulate. They're easy to control. And when you address them with a somewhat intellectual <clears throat> or thoughtful argument about the Constitution or something, 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't compute. It doesn't make any sense. And yet, in their heart of hearts, and in their minds, these people are rational. So if you offer them free things, they're going to vote for those who offer them more free things than those who don't. This is why the Republicans who push for this are so damn stupid and suicidal. But they ought not be able to drag the rest of us into the hole, you think? But there's a perfect example. And then when all of this is done, should it be done? New comprehensive immigration reform. Do you think that's the end of it? Do you think these groups are going to go away? Do you think these foreign governments in Mexico and other countries, do you think they're going to stop agitating? Do you think the quote-unquote statist revolution will be over? No, it's never over. It's never over. 